I'm Patrick Ryan from the Tennessee World Affairs Council. I'm speaking today with John Scanapieco about the Japan America Society of Tennessee project on the impact of Japanese business in Tennessee. Uh, John Scanapieco is a former chairman of the Japan America Society of Tennessee uh, for three years from 2016 to 2019, also a board member uh, starting back in 2013. In his uh, professional uh, career, uh, John is a uh, attorney. Uh, his focus has been as a lawyer in cross-border activities, uh, transactions, uh, developing U.S.-Japan business. He's also worked with uh, the uh, public and private sector overlap with uh, the government uh, to help promote uh, foreign direct investment in Tennessee uh, and has uh, worked with Japanese businesses uh, who are looking uh, to invest in the state of Tennessee. You can com uh, find a complete bio for uh, John Scanapieco in uh, the program notes. Uh, John, welcome, and uh, thanks for taking time to talk to us today. Oh, thank you, Pat, for inviting me. Let's uh, let's start out with uh, just uh, an overview of, of your experiences. I outlined them briefly, but give us a little more background on uh, what you uh, have experienced in your professional life and also as a uh, volunteer chairman of, uh, of JAST in uh, your understanding of uh, the impact of Japanese uh, business in Tennessee. Sure. So when I arrived in Tennessee in uh, 1989, Japanese investment at that point was still, I would say, fairly new. Um, many of the uh, communities throughout Tennessee had never really interacted with folks from Japan, but they saw some of the success that other communities were having courting Japanese investment and then the impact that investment would have on their communities. And so I got involved uh, early on in um, helping these communities attract this, this investment. Um, because if you look at when a Japanese business would come to say a community, whether in the automotive sector, uh, tech, uh, some other technology, food production, whatever it was, um, it really had a significant impact on that community. And it's just been something that I have really been very interested in, um, uh, you know, in terms of doing cross-border business because of just the, I guess, the, the, the level of investment from Japan in Tennessee. It's our largest investor, and it really has had such a significant impact, you know, uh, uh, across the state. So where I would get involved is I would maybe either help, say, the state of Tennessee or maybe even Nashville. Um, and help promoting uh, this region to Japanese companies, or um, just in my role as a cross-border attorney with experience working with non-U.S. companies investing in, in the United States, uh, Japanese companies would contact us, and we would help them um, maybe explore different areas for their investment, and then ultimately maybe they would settle on Tennessee, and we would help them navigate uh, that, that process of you know, incentives at say the state level, setting up the right corporate uh, structure for them, and then helping them get their facility built, hiring employees, working through immigration issues, and and, and the like. So, so John, when uh, when you came in to uh, uh, look at the, at this uh, phenomenon, the development of a business here. Uh, what would you say was was the climate in terms of the evolution of uh, business? You know, we saw the mid to late 1970s, the first businesses come in and Japanese investment was about 2% uh, of the total FDI. Uh, and then, you know, now now we're looking at, uh, I think it's uh, 50, 60% of the foreign direct investment in Tennessee. Uh, where, where was, what was the climate uh, overall in terms of the scope of the investment, the, the types of businesses uh, that had come to Tennessee and uh, the, the communities in which they were locating? Well, early on, and I, and I really uh, need to give all the credit to former governor or now former senator, uh, Lamar Alexander, and then his whole team in courting Nissan to make their significant investment in the Smyrna area uh, for the first manufacturing facility uh, here in North America. That really served as a catalyst for further Japanese investment because, as you know, just in time, inventory methods. They set up their manufacturing facility, so it required all of their suppliers to move from Japan to uh, this area. And it couldn't be, I set up, well, if Nissan is here in, in, in Middle Tennessee, I can't then build the supplier down in Mississippi. I need to be close by. And so that really spurred significant investment initially around the auto.
automobile sector. But, uh, but as, as true, I, I find it in, in most cases where um, uh, certain uh, companies have success, then other businesses from that country, regardless whether it's the same industry or not, they will um, then follow. And so I think we've seen now a progression of investment, not only in auto and auto-related industries, so like with Bridgestone Americas, for example, but in other industries, whether it's in the printing, uh, I've seen health, uh, health tech investment, food and beverage, um, uh, printing, um, really, you name chemicals, uh, you, name, you name the industry, and I think you'll find some Japanese investment. But then they followed, and that investment spread from the middle Tennessee area really throughout now the whole state. I, I don't know any part of the state that doesn't have some uh, Japanese investment. So there's a, a certain level of uh, business magnetism, I, I guess you could call it, that uh, if, if, uh, if you build it, they will come, and if one comes, uh, others will follow. Well, but also I think another important factor that I think sometimes gets overlooked is the responsiveness of the Tennessee communities themselves. Because, you know, for example, I can be, I can put like a Nissan in the Smyrna area, but if the community itself is not welcoming to that, we'll say non-U.S. investor that comes and maybe their employees are not made to feel welcome in that community, then I think you really won't see much follow-on investment because Really, at the end of the day, yes, these companies want to go where it makes sense economically, say where there is a good workforce, there's good infrastructure, maybe access to raw materials, you know, maybe access to ports, whatever they may need from a business perspective. But I think the other key component, this is something that I've seen time and time again, is will the community welcome me, you know, from Japan to this, this, this place? And will they make my, my spouse feel welcome, my children feel welcome? And, and, and I think that is a component where, you know, I give, I give high marks to not only the state of Tennessee at the government level, but also to all those individual communities and the people in those communities really making the Japanese businesses feel welcome right from the get-go. I mean, I don't really, I don't recall many, I really hearing any stories where there was friction between the, say, the Japanese management or ownership in the communities that really they they were able to work so well together right from the get-go and i think you know japan american society played a, a, also a, an integral role in helping those communities understand the japanese culture and, and 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 just how doing business in japan is different from the united states not good not bad just different and how maybe they could make that their communities more welcoming to you know that investment and, and we've uh, we've heard from others we've talked to in this series about the uh, impact of that welcoming and that hospitality. Uh, that there were some CEOs who were looking at all the numbers and and the numbers pointed towards uh, Mississippi or Georgia or someplace else, but the CEO overrode the uh, decision of a panel and said Tennessee was the place uh, that uh, he or she wanted to go to. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and and I think this has served this state really well. And that's why, if you if you look, I mean, I, for really as long as I can remember, the state of Tennessee has been number one, two, three. I mean, it's been in the top ranking uh, in, in terms of attracting foreign direct investment and that welcoming uh, uh, attitude um, and the collaborative attitude of these communities. I really is one of the high points that, that is listed as why I came to Tennessee versus any one of the other number of states, you know, uh, here. So that that uh, leads into the the conversation about the the nature of relationships, and we've been told that uh, relationships rule when it comes to uh, the uh, the bringing of uh, FDI in general, but uh, the relationship with Japanese businesses in particular. Can you talk a little bit about how JAST and uh, others uh, in, in the Tennessee Economic and Community Development Department and and communities? Uh, what sorts of uh, relationship building uh, elements have gone into attracting businesses? Uh, what sort of uh, activities have the businesses themselves engaged in? I, I know uh, we can look around and see uh, foundations of various uh, corporations that support communities. Um, we see that uh, you know, right here in Nashville, we've got the uh, Nissan Stadium and the Bridgestone Arena. So, so clearly these businesses are getting involved in the community um in in many ways can you talk a little bit about that 
So sure. So the Japan American Society really came out of the need uh, in terms of economic development of helping not only the state of Tennessee, but also the, 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 the various communities throughout the state understand what it meant to do business with Japanese companies. Because again, you know, you have to think about it. Many of us um, just had never really uh, experienced or had any interaction with someone from Asia. That was literally the other side of the world. And so, uh, but at the same time, they wanted to learn more about the culture. They wanted to learn more about, uh, you know, Japan and Japanese businesses and how they do business. And so uh, the Japan American Society was kind of that bridge uh, between the Japanese businesses and what I'll call the economic development organizations at both the state level and at the local community level. And so they provided all sorts of resources, translation services, um, how to maybe even, what food to serve, you know, all these little things, again, that I think go a long way. At the same time, uh, JAS serves as the lead agency on behalf of the state in the Southeast U.S. Japan um, uh, um, organization. And then there's a corresponding organization on the other side, Japan, Southeast U.S. Um, uh, or, and, and, and we have a conference every, every uh, other, I guess it's every every year, uh, alternating between a southeastern U.S. state that's a member and in Japan. Um, and it, it's all geared around promoting both uh, the southeast to Japanese businesses and at the same time thanking the Japanese businesses for their, their existing uh, investment in, in the region and getting a better understanding of, okay, you know, you're here, what can we do to continue help you continue to be successful in our region. And so it's been a really good um, conference that they have, like I said, every, every year, just alternating uh, locations where we get together and really talk about this investment in the region and what we can do to make it better. And we'll have governors participate. We'll have, I say, commissioner of economic development, whatever the different states call that role, as well as sometimes tourism will be there. Uh, representing the state, um, and then other local uh, economic development organizations from all the different states will also be there in participating in that in, in that conference. Um, we also will facilitate um, other types of events. So the Cherry Blossom Festival here in Nashville, uh, it's the largest cherry blossom festival, I think, in the United States now. I mean, we, we average about 45 to 50,000 attendees. That led to uh, to celebrate uh, the anniversary um, where the uh, uh, Japanese uh, government uh, planted, I think it was a thousand uh, cherry blossom trees around the national community. We have a, a Memphis uh, Japan festival in the fall that's now growing also in popularity. Again, one of the things that we find is if we can educate the local community on not only Japanese culture, but also the impact the businesses have, that that leads to a better relationship, a more collaborative relationship. And so we're, we're doing uh, these events uh, in Memphis, here in Nashville, and also the, um, uh, the Asia Festival in Knoxville that has a, a component that, that represents Japan as well. We'll participate in that. Um, and then we work with different businesses that may want to participate more in the community, helping them identify some of these opportunities where they can participate. Now, again, Nissan's investment uh, in the naming rights of Nissan Stadium is something they've done on their own. But in terms of a smaller scale and supporting different events um, that the community may have, we'll host um, different uh, business delegations from Japan here in the region. Uh, again, bringing the business community together here in the U.S. with the Japanese business community, uh, again, to create uh, an, an, an environment where they can have a dialogue about opportunities, uh, challenges, best practices, and really, again, share uh, some business ideas, which we hope then will lead to actual business being done by these, you know, by these businesses. Well, we've uh, we've talked about a lot of the elements that go into building the relationship and uh, what the experiences have been. Uh, but tell us, uh, just in a, a brief description, if you would, what you would tell a chamber of commerce in an area in Tennessee that didn't have uh, a Japanese investment yet, or 
or some other group that was interested in knowing uh, why is it important that uh, we cultivate a, a positive uh, business relationship and what the impact has been. So I, I guess the question is, well, what, what, what has the uh, impact been uh, to the state of Tennessee from Japanese FDI? Right. I mean, so I think the current numbers are Japanese investment in um, Tennessee, where either number one, I, I, I get different numbers, we're either number one in terms of total foreign direct investment uh, of all the states in the United States. I also hear, and maybe this is coming from the California people, so they're a little biased. They say they're number one and we're number two. But regardless, it's significant investment here in Tennessee by Japanese companies. They have chosen Tennessee to be one of the leading areas where they're gonna invest their, their resources. And what that has led to is the direct employment of over 50,000 um, Tennesseans. And then what I call the follow-on employment, the indirect jobs, it's in the hundreds of thousands. So, I mean, if you really think about that impact across the state, I mean, it's, pretty, it's, it's significant. There are over 200 Japanese invested businesses scattered throughout our state in a variety of different industries. So you think of the impact to the tax base in a community and what that can mean to the services that you're able to offer in the community through you know, building more schools, fire stations, police stations, providing more social services. And at the same time, you're bringing a more diverse population into your community, which, you know, again, diversity, is, is, is such a good thing in terms of it, 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 it provides some different thoughts and different ideas. I mean, we all think of the old Silk Road and what that did in terms of bringing different, you know, foods and thought and, uh, uh, and inventions to, you know, to the, to the Western world. Well, it's the same thing, I think, on a much smaller scale, obviously, but what it can do to a community. Um, it really opens up that community to understand that, you know, there are people out there in the world that are different from me, but, but that difference is not something to be fearful of. It's something to celebrate. And it makes my community a better place. And then, of course, just the, um, so then the follow-on investment that can come and then the, in, the economic impact that can come from that. So to me, any time a, 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 a foreign company is looking to invest in the state, I mean, whether it's Jap Japanese or otherwise, I mean, I really do promote it because I think it really does add value to that, that community uh, economically and also socially, culturally, in terms of what they bring to the community. Well, you, you touched uh, previously on uh, business magnetism of, uh, of uh, fellow businesses coming in behind you. But let's, let's talk just uh, briefly about the impact downtown Nashville, the Bridgestone Tower. You know, we, we had the headquarters of Nissan move from uh, California to Tennessee. Uh, the Bridgestone headquarters coming to the region and then building a tower downtown. And all of a sudden, uh, businesses, uh, large, uh, some global, some not, uh, but uh, major businesses investing in downtown, Nashville Yards and, and elsewhere. Uh, touch a, a little bit on uh, the, the magnetism in, in the downtown Nashville sure. area. Yeah, sure. So if you look at, well, I, I'll, I'm going to talk about two different areas. So the Cool Springs area of, 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 say, Williamson County and then downtown. Because I think if you look at Nissan North American headquarters, that was the first major development there. And now you look at all the development around it, there are many um, uh, non-U.S. companies that are putting their either U.S. headquarters, North America, U.S., or regional headquarters in that area. Um, and and I, I also say it attracted uh, Mitsubishi. They moved their uh, North American headquarters uh, directly, I'll say, across the highway from Nissan. I guess I think they can look in each other's windows with telescopes. Uh, maybe, to, uh, I don't know, to, to, to see what the other's doing. But, but again, that investment then spurred the significant investment in the Williamson County area of, of really, you know, large corporate relocations to that, to that area. And just as you mentioned, with Bridgestone America's downtown, and you look at now all the development that's coming, you know, Alliance Bernstein moving, UBS moving. These are all, you know, uh, UBS is, is Swiss coming. Obviously, I, I say Alliance, they're from New York, so we'll call them a foreign company too uh, in, down in the South. But, but the fact that, you know, New York companies have, have come, um, you know, Mitsui has a, has a major investment here as well. I mean, you're really starting to see Nashville being recognized um, as a center for global business. 
and it really started with the investment of the Japanese uh, businesses here, the large investments. So the Bridgestone America's investment, you know, remember they used to be out at, uh, by the Opryland area and then decided to come consolidate their, their operations, their management operations here uh, in downtown and the same thing with Nissan. But it all started with that, with that initial investment. And then, of course, because of that investment, it's the same thing with the jobs. You know, you have the direct jobs, but then it's the indirect jobs. So you look at when you when I'm building that uh, that tower, Bridgestone Tower. Well, what are they going to need? They're going to need food. They're going to need um, housing, you know, to support that. And so you look around now downtown Nashville, and you have grocery stores. You have more and more residential units, whether they're uh, you know apartments or condominiums or you know even houses. You know, small houses, say out in Germantown and other parts of East Nashville and, and other parts of downtown, all of that is, is due directly because of that business investment. I mean, you're not going to build, you're not going to build houses where there are no jobs, right? So you're going to, you're, the jobs have to be there. And now you're getting the entertainment investment, you're getting the, the, the food investment, you're getting the housing investment. I mean, it really is significant. Lipscomb now has a campus downtown as well. Um, you know, to, to, to provide educational opportunities, um, you know, in the downtown area. I mean, it really, I was just down there yesterday, and I'm just amazed every time I look around at just what I see and what I recall from when I got here in 1989. And it really is significant. And I attribute a lot of that to the foreign investment that's come. But then again, that all was triggered. The catalyst for all of that was the Nissan investment. Well, John, we're uh, we're uh, closing in on the end here, and I uh, just have one one last question and, and your final observations. Uh, let's let's talk, touch a little bit on where uh, where we're going in the future. What uh, what do you see as Japanese investments uh, that might be coming? You know, we have major automotive industry investments. Uh, uh, we have an uh, investment NTT Data is a, a new arrival on the scene here. So there are non-automotive uh, businesses that have come. Uh, there are other countries. Uh, South Korea has invested heavily in the, in the Clarksville area. But uh, talk to us about FDI, in particular Japan, what you see happening in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, sure. So, you know, if you think about it, the Japanese investment in Tennessee is fairly mature. So, you know, all these communities now have been dealing with Japanese businesses. They've been, so they have a good sense of, of what that's all about. So I, I, I will provide a warning that we don't take it for granted because I feel like to some extent we're taking this investment for granted and we shouldn't because other states have recognized our success and how that success was driven by this Japanese investment. And there is significant investment to come as technology continues to advance. There are more and more companies that are going to want to come to the United States. And if we don't focus on the relationships that we have and thank our uh, uh, these companies for making that choice of Tennessee, then my fear is other states are going to be able to steal that investment. I mean, you look at a lot of investment, uh, Japanese investment going into Kentucky. I see a lot going into Georgia. And I wonder, you know, are we doing all that we need to do to ensure that we are maintaining those relationships, that we that we that, that our Japanese investors understand that we care and that we really appreciate that investment. I feel like it, at some of the high government levels that we are now taking it for granted. And so my suggestion or recommendation would be that we again focus more time and attention on our Japanese partners. Uh, because they are so important to the state, and we don't want to risk losing that investment, as you've already pointed out, in not just automobile investment, it's now in more advanced technologies, uh, that whole layer of investment, we don't want to lose that to our neighboring states, simply because we, um, like I said, took it for granted. Okay, uh, we've been talking with uh, John Scanapieco. John, thanks so much for your time. Uh, John is an attorney who focuses on cross-border transactions. He has helped Japanese businesses uh, develop uh, investments in Tennessee. He's helped U U.S. businesses uh, in trade uh, with uh, Japanese businesses. 
and he has been the chairman of the Japan America Society of Tennessee, which promotes uh, the relationship between Japanese businesses and the community. And uh, John, thanks uh, so much for being with us today. No, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.